from singing about the gift from Allah to chanting about sitting in the mosque, Liverpool fans can't seem to get enough of their team's forward, Mohamed Salah. Describe Mohamed Salah in one word. Excellent. He's awesome. Amazing. Handsome. We really love it. <laughs> Take him home tomorrow. <laughs> Having sent Egypt to the World Cup finals after a 28 year absence, on the banks of the Nile, he is nicknamed the Fourth Pyramid. And having scored 43 goals in 51 games, putting himself on par with the world's best, in Merseyside's Liverpool, Salah is known as the Egyptian King. The footballer's talents are universally admired, especially at a time when Islamophobia and anti-immigrant sentiment have been on the rise in Britain. After all, it was only in 2015 that Muslim Liverpool fans were labelled a disgrace for praying at half-time in Anfield Stadium. Fast forward two years later and enter Salah, an unashamedly proud Muslim from the Middle East. Salah can be seen cupping his hands in pre-kickoff prayer and prostrating in post-goal celebration and all to the backdrop of thousands of fans singing about being Muslim too. To him, faith and football go hand in hand. So, is Mohammed Salah changing the way Muslims are seen here in Liverpool and beyond? In 2015, lawyers and Liverpool FC fans Abu Bakr Bula and Asif Bodia are at Anfield watching a game when they decide to go pray at the bottom of a stairwell. Unfortunately, there was a, another supporter who had a, a phone and he took a picture and then put that on social media, on Twitter, um, labelling it uh, as a disgrace. Both Liverpool Football Club and its fans were quick to condemn the tweet, with the club releasing a statement saying it would not tolerate any form of discrimination. And the coming years would tell a different story. <coughs> and now we're seeing Liverpool fans mimicking the prayer. Uh, do you think Salah has changed and challenged perceptions of fans towards Muslims and Islam? I think to an extent he has because a lot of the, the other supporters are more accepting of uh, our um, praying and our behaviour. Sometimes we don't want to pray in the prayer room. If we, we might just pray like we did last time mm -hmm. near the stairwell or something. And we don't seem to bat an eyelid, so I think uh, help having Mama Salah. In 2016, the new main stand at Anfield included a multi faith prayer room for its fans as part of the redevelopment. Some people might have been a bit more reserved uh, and a bit more sort of afraid to show their faith, and, and because of the effect Salah's had, now they feel more emboldened, as it were, to, you know, to, to practice their faith. We're here at an event for the Red Men TV. The first platform dedicated to giving football fans a voice, and in this case, it's the Liverpool supporters. We're about to the Red Men themselves, Paul and Chris. What is it specifically about Mohamed Salah's identity that Liverpool fans seem to love so much? It's his goals, first and foremost. It's his, other absolutely. Than other than his goals, it's the fact that he's a nice guy. It's the fact that he stands for something that we haven't had at Liverpool for a long time. And he's proven people wrong each and every single day. And he's he's changing how people think of Muslims in the UK and probably on a wider audience as well. And you know, there's an acceptance to Liverpool anyway because we're a port city. So we've always had different influences from all around the world. But you know. The fact that Mohamed Salah has come over here and the way that he's dealt with the media and the way that he's dealt with everything else has just been, it's been unbelievable to watch and it's a real pleasure to see him changing perceptions. Well listen, we live in, uh, we live in Brexit Britain, we live in a, a country now that has chosen isolationism, it's chosen to, to cut itself off from, from Europe, from the rest of the world in some regard and there's a, there's a fear of xenophobia that comes with that and I think the best thing about this is it shows that, you know, Mohamed Salah transcends all of that, you know, particularly and his faith, it's not that his faith is important, it's just that his faith isn't important and, you know, it, and people can, you know, we live in a world where there's, there's mainstream media, there's mainstream newspapers that promote anti-Muslim sentiments and then you come over to this and, and Liverpool fans and, and the city of Liverpool gets that's tarred by those same institutions they don't like us and you know what we don't care because we are an open city we're a we're a multicultural city we're a caring city and we 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 bring people in uh, and we love them regardless of uh, you know race creed or religion and also it helps when the fact that Mahalo is incredible at football as well
For many in this city, it seems no surprise that Mohamed Salah is so well loved by Liverpoolians. Wherever he goes, attention follows. And Albert, the owner of this fish and chip shop, discovered just that when he found himself in the centre of attention after Mohamed Salah was filmed inside for an advert. When he came in, he was just the normal guy. Yeah. You know, even though, like I say, he's got like football status and, yeah. and he's, he's the best footballer this season, from my opinion, in Europe. Um, he's been doing brilliance. People just look at him as a footballer, perfect footballer, and then it's just a humble guy. It's just nice. They don't look at him where he's from or whatever. It's just, it fits in. The hype for Mohamed Salah is perhaps best showcased by the shop behind me. And the owner, Stephen, who can't keep up with the demand for Salah merchandise, has seen firsthand how big the love for the footballer is. Everybody, wants, as they walk on the door, they always say, Mo Salah, Mo Salah. It's always Mo Salah. And how does this cardboard card do? This cardboard, I can't get enough of them. Yeah? As, as I get them in, they're gone. It's like hotcakes. There's no tomorrow with these. Everybody loves them. Everybody talks about them. Nobody mentions anybody like him. I've never known a player to come to Liverpool and get a mention like he does. Liverpool is in fact home to UK's first mosque and Islamic centre, the Abdullah Quilliam Society. It was founded by William Henry Quilliam, the first English convert to Islam in 1887. Do you think that Mohammed Salah has changed or challenged any of the perceptions towards Muslims? Normally all you'll hear through the media is the bad things about Islam. Well, Mohammed Salah just projects a whole different thing on it, he's on the other side. But when you see even the Liverpool fans now with their new song, if you've heard it before, right? like, they'll say that if he was Muslim, they'll be Muslim too as well. Mo Salah is a positive role model for the Muslims and non-Muslims. I just hope more of the Muslim players do become a positive role model like Mo Salah. We need them in this day and age to be able to break the barriers about people have negative perceptions about Islam and the Muslim community here in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in the world. Uh, I've got a business myself. Yeah. All they do is day and night they talk Most about Mosala. Yeah. yeah. They just come in. Mosala is great. You know, we love you Muslims. I'm thinking, what's happening to the world? If you're wondering where the heart of Liverpool Football Club is, think no further than the legendary Anfield Stadium. The last home game of the season, Mohamed Salah needs to score one more goal to break the record in the English Premier League and cement his place as a Liverpool legend. And it only takes 26 minutes. So Mohamed Salah has just scored and everyone's going crazy. This final home game not only shows how Liverpudlians have embraced Salah, but also that for the Egyptian king, Liverpool is now home. Describe Mohamed Salah in one word. We never got it. How would you describe Mohamed Salah in one word? Mohamed Salah is the Maradona of today. He is God's gift.